Good evening. I don't know about you, but I've always found that one of the most important things in a game is its atmosphere. Atmosphere is incredibly important. The tone and world of a game is usually what sticks with the player long after they've beaten it, much more so than its clunky inventory mechanics or reload animations. And in my experience, a good atmosphere can keep me playing an otherwise deeply flawed game, even if I'm not actually having that much fun. Now, when most people think of atmosphere in a game, they probably think of something like Fallout, Resident Evil, or even Silent Hill. But I personally think that one of the most fascinating atmospheres in any game is actually that of Gmod. Yes, that Gmod. Now I know that might sound silly, but just hear me out a sec. Gary's Mod is a game perhaps known best online for its wacky ragdoll physics, abrupt nuclear detonations, cringy My Little Pony and World War II German roleplay servers, and skibbity toilet. But beneath its goofy surface, Gmod is built from Half-Life 2, which is a grim dystopian game with lots of dark and depressing undertones that, though usually buried deep under Gmod's signature copyright violating insanity, can sometimes create a distinct uncanny feeling when there's not any wacky shenanigans going on to distract you. In other words, once all your friends pile out of a multiplayer server and you're left alone, Gmod can actually be kind of fucking creepy. Take for instance GM Construct, one of the most iconic sandbox levels in all of gaming. I'm sure you've seen countless memes of this place by now. It's one of the only two levels Gary's Mod comes with on its own if you haven't got any mods or other games installed, and its green grass and bright blue sky are so picturesque that the map almost feels like a crude crayon drawing made by a kindergartner or something. Construct has served as the backdrop of countless people's childhoods over the last 15 or so years, and I'm sure many watching have warm, cozy memories of time spent goofing around here with friends when we were all younger. But take the map to a single player level lobby with no mods installed, and with nothing distracting you from just taking in this abstract industrial environment, something quickly becomes obvious. This place is otherworldly. Its layout doesn't make any sense, it doesn't actually feel like or resemble any places that exist in the real world, and there's even some areas like this dark room that a lot of people have long considered to just be flat out creepy. The existential dread that humans experience in empty public transit areas, stores, and yes, even video game servers, is a phenomenon that the internet has become acutely aware of in recent years, inspiring endless discussions about liminal spaces and canopsia, defined as the eerie atmosphere of a place that is usually bustling with people but is now abandoned. As of late, a lot of people have started getting extremely tired of hearing about this since the internet hasn't really shut up about it since it first became popular. But what if I told you that GM Construct didn't become iconic as one of the most unintentionally creepy video game levels ever just because of little kids on Roblox doing next spot chases? What if I told you that it hasn't just been everyone's paranoia, that there is in fact something sinister hiding in GM Construct, and that the level's creepiness actually runs a lot deeper than anybody realizes? <laughs> Something a lot of people don't know about Construct is that it carries a very long, complicated, and somewhat obscure history dating all the way back to 2004, which I'm sure makes it older than most people watching this video. The vibrant version that everyone knows today technically didn't even exist until 2012, and the earlier versions look strikingly different. They were much less colorful. In fact, the original map actually didn't have any color at all because it was just meant to be a reference to the original Matrix movie. It's actually a bit funny to realize that what started out as a white purgatory with buttons to spawn Half-Life 2 props quickly evolved into one of the greatest and most iconic digital playgrounds ever, the moment people started realizing you could make the ragdolls in the map hump each other. Stay classy, Gmod community. Moving on though, the bleak, muted, and flat out bizarre vibes that early versions of Construct carry have fascinated people for a long time, and they're a big part of the level's mystique. Quite peculiarly, back in June I got the chance to interview Gary Newman, the creator of both GM Construct and Gmod as a whole, and he revealed to me that he actually doesn't even really remember making some of these early versions of the map, which is kind of odd. Anyways, fast forward to the present day. Construct hasn't changed or seen an update in over 10 years, and it would seem that the version that everyone's come to know and love since 2012 is here to stay. However, on July 21st, 2021, a mysterious add-on abruptly appeared on the Gary's Mod Workshop simply labeled GM Construct 13 Beta, and it immediately started catching people's eyes for a number of reasons. It was posted by two users named Zalaulau and Zarzo, and being 172 megabytes, the add-on was suspiciously large given that it claimed to only contain a single level. So, what the hell is Construct 13 Beta? Well, here's what the author had to say in the description of the upload. This is the current GM construct with almost all the removed features ported back from the Gmod 13 beta period. In 2012, I was following GM Construct 13 progress, testing, saving links, and at that time I even ended up getting and publishing an unmodified version of the map to preserve history. Unfortunately, I never liked that some content was removed. And now, nine years later, I finally decided to get my hands dirty and do something about it. 
Obviously, I needed a little artistic freedom to blend all the pieces together naturally, since we have many unfinished or unrefined parts mixed with map resizes. But I didn't leave important features out. Each version got carefully looked at, and even the doubtful things are back. I also took the liberty of integrating some improvements. This description seems to call back to a somewhat obscure piece of authentic Gmod history. The fact that the modern version of Construct we know today was actually built using suggestions from the now defunct Face Punch forums. Basically, the developers of Gmod wanted to know what players wanted to see in a new version of Construct, and took community feedback via a forum thread to try out various different ideas and concepts. Having a look at the screenshots on the Construct 13 beta page, the uploader's claim checks out, and they've even included a few extra links showing proof that they really were members of the Gmod community back in the day. So based on that, it certainly looks like this map is nothing more than an editive construct that restores a bunch of ideas that were once considered for the level during a brief phase of experimentation, but ultimately scrapped. However, the comments and discussion pages on Construct 13 Beta clearly indicate that this houses something much more ominous than a mere beta content recreation. And that description given really doesn't explain this huge file size. For reference, the original GM construct is only 35 megabytes. So let's have a look for ourselves, why don't we? Downloading the add-on off the workshop and booting up Gmod, nothing seems too fishy at a glance. The level appears on the map menu right next to the real construct, even sporting a custom icon with a little beta stamp on it. Clicking on the level and loading into the game, we can immediately see all the classic construct landmarks like the spawn buildings, the warehouse, and the pawnside tower. The skyline looks a little different though, with more visible cliffs and forests, and there's also a new sign on the side of the warehouse reading Construct Inc. These are our first sign of those restored features from the old face punch thread that the add-on description promised. And if we enter pretty much any of these familiar buildings around us will immediately start coming across even more interesting cut content. For example, heading down to the white colorable room, it now has doors so you can fully engulf yourself in the void without any visual interruptions, just pure white. This is kind of cool, but it does have one critical problem, being that these doors close behind you automatically. This makes it startlingly easy to lose track of direction and get stuck inside if you don't put a prop down by the door or something, so I can definitely see why this feature was removed. The dark room is already pretty spooky even with well-lit exit doors, so getting lost in here probably would have terrified me as a kid. Heading even further down, the mirror room now leads to a bunker, which in turn connects to a sprawling series of tunnels that lead back to the dark room, the spawn room, and even a new area funneling into the lake. Looking at the original form thread, this was apparently meant for building submarines, which is a novel idea, but let's be real here, ain't nobody building submarines in this game, man. You ever build a fucking submarine in Gmod? I haven't, and look at how long I've played this game, so clearly nobody's gonna fucking use that. The tunnels also connect to that lakeside building, which instead of being completely hollow and dark like we've come to expect, now has much more welcoming lighting and winding stairs that lead all the way to the rooftop. This is actually pleasant. The other apartment building has a ladder leading up to its rooftop as well, making the whole level a lot more accessible by foot. Which is sad to see because I always kind of felt like the construct we got left players extremely reliant on noclip to get around. From what I can tell, these ideas and areas I've shown genuinely are all real documented areas that were once prototyped and planned for GM Construct, but ultimately scrapped for the sake of simplicity. Now that would all be fine and good if all the map really was was what it seems to be on its surface, a pretty cool piece of gaming history that does a good job of restoring content most people would have never seen. But come on, you've seen the title and length of this video, you know there's something else at play here. GM Construct 13 Beta is weird. And I don't just mean weird because it's different from the main construct, no, I mean it's weird weird. If you run around this place long enough, it quickly becomes apparent that something's off about it, beyond the usual strange vibes we've come to expect from GM Construct. For starters, these maintenance tunnels are creepy. They've got loads of graffiti, they're grimy looking, and some of the lights are out. The implication that Construct needs maintenance also begs more questions about what this place is actually supposed to be. Who maintains Construct? Who built this place? And for what reason? On top of all that, when I first booted up this map, these tunnels felt weirdly easy to get lost in. And it turns out this wasn't just in my head. After exploring for a while, it became increasingly clear to me that these tunnels play tricks on you. Sometimes you'll wind up on the opposite side of the map from where you should be, because sometimes the layout just kind of changes? I don't know how else to describe it, it's trippy as hell. This happens in a couple of other places in the map too. One that comes to mind is this hallway behind the spawn area. Sometimes when you turn through, you'll somehow wind up back in the same room you just came from. It's all very weird and kind of makes you feel like you're going crazy. The first sign of something outright ominous, however, was here, in front of the infamous dark room. Uh oh, 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 man. I don't want to fucking go in there. That was a real clip of me reacting to this level blindly on stream. The light in front of the dark room flickered ominously, which actually kind of startled me. And then going over to the hallway near the mirror and colorable room, my flashlight stopped working too. 
By this point, it was clear the level had a lot of tricks up its sleeve, but little did I know this was only scratching the surface. Exploring the map a little while longer, I occasionally started seeing trash fires around the place. Just chairs and random pieces of garbage sitting around, set ablaze as if someone was camping here and trying to keep warm. Now in the game Portal, there's a part where the player character begins breaking out of their intended areas and finding traces of a schizophrenic employee who survived a neurotoxin gassing, which helps the player uncover a further conspiracy explored in the game's later plotline. I bring this up because these little areas definitely reminded me of those Ratman dens. So if this is anything like Portal, does that mean there's someone here? Where would they be hiding? Maybe in that ever terrifying ominous dark room that just flickered a few seconds ago? Let's have a look. <laughs> For some godforsaken reason, the dark room will sometimes have barnacles from Half-Life 2 lining their ceilings, serving as a trap for any poor bastard who stumbles in without paying attention to their surroundings. This place also doesn't take kindly to decorations. If you try spawning lights or props in or outside the dark room, this happens. Additionally, if you try driving a car in or around the place, its engine will die. And any NPCs you leave inside the dark room will mysteriously die off screen. If you hang out around here long enough, eventually a chair will appear, illuminated by a single spotlight, emanating some ominous ambience. But I walked up to the chair and nothing happened, and I couldn't sit down in it either. So I decided to head out. Don't worry though, we'll be back here later. I headed back up to the surface again, and by this point I was no longer alone on the map. As there was now this guy standing by spawn, silently staring ahead expressionlessly and greenly. I know there are some really, really young Zoomers in my audience, so I'm sorry to break it to you guys that this isn't a Breaking Bad reference. This is Info Player Start, an entity that's supposed to look like Gordon Freeman, and is used in the game's map editing software Hammer to mark spawn points. The thing is, this model is only supposed to appear as a marker in that map software, not in the game itself. So needless to say, it's extremely odd for it to appear in your game in this way, and it's even more odd that if you get too close to him, he'll teleport away. After wandering around for a while, I also ran into another bizarre Gordon Freeman anomaly, this time taking the appearance of the weird unfinished third-person model from Half-Life 2, which is pretty much a weird untextured version of his model from the original Half-Life. This guy seems to just kind of spawn at random parts of the map and stare at you from a distance. Just like the info player start before him, you can't kill him or get rid of him or really do anything to him. A lot of players apparently call him Semper, as a reference to a creepypasta that revolves around this same Gordon placeholder model. I'm not sure if there's any actual intentional connection between this map and the creepypasta, but either way, this guy definitely feels invasive and and imposing. In fact, if around this point you get spooked and decide to leave to another map, this guy can actually apparently follow you there. He doesn't hurt you, he doesn't jump scare you, he just watches from a distance, and you actually can't get rid of him without outright uninstalling the add-on. So if you're planning to check this map out for yourself, you'd better make sure you remember to wipe your downloads once you're done, or else this guy might pay you a visit when you're least expecting it. Anyways, after playing Construct 13 beta for a while, I could have sworn I had started seeing figures out of the corner of my eye, disappearing around corners. And it turned out I was right. Once you've explored a bit, there's a number of places that these dark shadow people will pop up around the map. And if you manage to catch up to one of them with no clip or by bunny hopping, this will happen. Spooky, huh? For those who don't know, those two noises you heard are both sounds from Half-Life 2. The first one is Squeal1.Wave. This sound was originally supposed to appear on a creepy clock pendulum mechanism in the Half-Life 2 beta, but after being cut, somehow mysteriously ended up being triggerable here in the Coast Chapter if you blow up this guard tower. It's a really weird noise, and nobody seems to have any idea why it's there. The other is playground underscore memory dot wave, which plays at the start of the game in the playground section and is supposed to drive home the sad lack of children in City 17 due to the combine suppression field. Needless to say, they're both pretty unsettling sounds, so combining them with a banishment to the void makes for a pretty off-putting experience the first time around. Now, just about everything we've covered in this map so far has been creepy, but this next thing I'm about to talk about crosses the threshold into being genuinely bewildering. First though, a brief history lesson. Have you ever heard of minges or minge bags? It's a term that was used in the early days of Gmod's history to describe players who would join servers just to troll or cause problems. This is because the default name you'd be given in Gmod in the time before Source Engine games sync to your Steam 
stream name used to be Mingebag. So anyone who joined a server without bothering to give themselves a proper name was assumed to have been up to no good. The term came to be associated with a T-posing Dr. Kleiner with a fizz gun in his crotch, which I think was also what your character would look like by default if you didn't set your player model in older versions of the game. The Urban Dictionary definitions for the term show just how dated it is. The footage I'm showing on screen right now is from War of the Servers, an early feature-length Gmod Machinima movie made all the way back in 2007. This film took the concept of minge bag trolls invading servers and made a parody of War of the Worlds out of it. It pretty much solidified the term minge bag in the halls of Gmod history, and it's a truly classic piece of Gmod media. Its creators even pressed this thing to DVD with its own custom box set, which is really cool and is partly what inspired this video's thumbnail. Anyway, while minge bags were long considered a staple of the game's multiplayer, if you were someone who stuck to single player, you were pretty unlikely to have ever heard of or been visited by one. But what if you were? Well, if you stick around GM Construct 13 beta long enough, minge bags will start showing up. Gravity gun crotch and all, appearing right inside your single player game session. They walk and fly around, they destroy shit, they kill you if you get too close to them or if you get in the way of their fizz gun beam, and are overall crazy, unpredictable, and dangerous. But they're also so intelligent and human-like that it was actually a bit off-putting the first time I ran into them. They run around and jump just like humans do. They're a spitting image of the old school Gmod minges. So how does this work? Are these a hyper-advanced AI or something? No, actually. It turns out these really are other real players who have been connected directly to your single player game. It's apparently made possible through a proprietary central server called MingeNet, which the map occasionally tries to connect you to if it detects that you have an internet connection. MingeNet reads your position, rotation, whether you're firing your weapon, whether you've used chat recently, and whether you've been attacking another minge, and then redistributes all this data back to the central server to sync it across everyone playing the map at one time. Also, sometimes one of these guys will wind up in the skybox, which is really funny looking. If you want proof these are real players, take note of the fizz gun. When minges appear in a game, your fizz gun is altered to also function as a drawing tool, which can spray missing texture cubes on the wall. And this allows for some very rudimentary communication and penis drawings. You can't talk to them in in-game chat, though. If anyone tries, the chat will get flooded with the word cough, which is a reference to an old cough virus scare that took control of Gmod back in 2014. Anyway, the fact that Construct 13 Beta invented a way to force online players into your single-player match seriously impresses me, and is something that would have scared me shitless as a kid. When this map first came out, and before people cracked open the programming to figure out how they worked, there was a lot of contention in the community as to whether these minges were actually other players or not, with a ton of experiments being conducted involving them and their behavior. Gmod Reddit and discussion forums were also inundated with posts of confused and startled people complaining about these scary minge bags causing ruckus in their games, to the point that some posters started making PSAs about it. It's all pretty funny. Anyways, up at this apartment I noticed a lambda on the wall. This is another asset from Half-Life 2, and in that game it denotes a secret stash of items. So what's it doing here? Well, it turns out that if you beat this corner in with a crowbar, a hole will be revealed that you can then crawl and drop down through into a vent. This vent connects to the dark room and a small little hidden exit by the mirror room, but also this little cubby. The thing that's special about this cubby is that it has a wall that displays cryptic graffiti, referred to as the Oracle. The Oracle can display a lot of different images. Some of them seem to provide lore, some of them just depict things from the map like the minge bags, but others are actually coded hints that will be key in helping us unravel the mystery behind this map. All of these hints can be found in the add-ons files for easy viewing, stored in the same folder as this image of Floppa for some reason. Let's start with this one. It shows a man peering into some kind of portal next to the darkroom, accompanied by what looks like a traffic cone with a light on it or something. So what the hell does this mean? Well, it turns out that that traffic cone is an item called the curse detector that can be used to reveal hidden secrets in the map. The only way to obtain it is to wait for an RNG event that causes a white woman to come running out of the dark room gunning it for the beach side. If you let her get there, she'll die, but if you block her, this will happen. Thank God someone had the courage to do that. I gotta say, this would probably be a bit less goofy if they hadn't used the fucking Taco Bell noise. Anyway, if we take this curse detector to the rear entrance of the dark room, as was shown in that hint, the laws of reality will break and a dimensional portal will open to a brand new location. Heading through, we find ourselves in a weird facility with some sparse living arrangements, a ton of props scattered around, and a laboratory. Going up to the second floor, we'll find an office area, giving us a name for this place. The ARC, or the Anomaly Research Center. Digging through our surroundings, we can find a pile of PHX slabs with sketches and notes on them, presumably scribbled down by members of the ARC. Pressing E on these will open separate links to various creepy Gmod YouTube videos, and there's a lot of them. At first, I assumed these channels and videos would unravel a greater mystery, but as I went on, they started feeling less and less coherent, and eventually started to feel like flat-out gags. It actually took me aback when certain plates even started pulling up uploads from Gmod ARGs I've covered elsewhere on my channel. There's links to videos from Gunslinger Pro 2009, Badwater Videos 2009, Survivor of All, and even Gordon Poopman 297, which was briefly a bit of an inside joke on my channel. 
channel. I guess whoever put these here must have been a viewer of mine, which is sweet. There's also a few other spooky Gmod anomalies you can spot images of around the base. We can even see a reference to the ever-popular Interloper ARG that I never got around to covering. However, none of the Interloper-related commands that my stream chat was spamming me to try seem to do anything. And the notes next to these images seem to indicate that none of them are actually directly tied to what's going on in Construct 13 beta at all. They're just kind of Easter eggs, I guess. But based on their name and all the references to other popular spooky Gmod content, it definitely seems that the ARC is meant to basically be a Gmod equivalent of the Secure Contain Protect Foundation. Which, if you somehow haven't heard of, is another popular ARG revolving around a secret organization that captures and studies paranormal phenomena. It's a pretty nifty idea. Other than that, there's a few other things to check out around this facility as well. For example, these two slabs with in-game screenshots on them. One is of a man staring at the mirror, and the other is some kind of ritual involving five babies and a skull. If we go out and try replicating the ritual scene in the second image, we'll discover that it has the effect of purging any minge bags in your game reliably, so that you can get some peace and quiet. Which is kind of nice, because once their mystique wears off, they can get a little annoying. The other image seems to be hinting at something being off about the mirror room. Once again, this will make more sense later. There's also two spots marked on the base's floor. One is accompanied by the numbers 0019, and will set any prop that comes into contact with it on fire. The other is a yellow square that gives props a low gravity effect. The last notable thing I could find here, though, was this combine helicopter bomb and containment that if you touch explodes, killing you and deleting the entire base. So, with the cryptic clues from the Oracle in the vent, and the information we've managed to learn here in the ARC base, let's start trying to solve this mystery, why don't we? Starting out, let's head to the dark room and have a look at that weird chair from earlier again. Now, I know that physically attacking an ominous ghostly apparition might be intimidating, but you're gonna need to shoot a fucking bazooka at this thing. Once it explodes, the room will fill with stalker NPCs from Half-Life 2 that will all slowly burn to death. All except one. Now, do you remember earlier how I mentioned that those trash fires around the map were reminiscent of Ratman from Portal? Well, this last stalker's given name is Ratman. And at first I didn't pick up on this, but he's actually not a reference to Portal. He's actually directly taken from an old Gmod map called Gmod 13 Hotels, which I previously wound up talking about back in my Gmod's Biggest Secrets video. Basically, in that map, there was a secret area you could discover that would tell you the story of an ancient Ratman who escaped from prison in 1994 and had been living underneath the place ever since. He was shown to leave weird trash trash fires around, and if you went deep enough, you could eventually come across him in his lair. Apparently, this weird, extremely obscure character from a Gmod map from 10 years ago has returned for a cameo appearance here in Construct 13 beta. And if we follow Ratman across the map into that submarine building room from the start of the video, we'll find he's now decorated it with the same assortment of furniture and even his signature radio from GM13 Hotels. This is Ratman's new lair, and I gotta say, it's quite the upgrade from the old one. There's functioning electricity, and he's even got a pool. Ratman's lair is pretty important to progressing from here on out. Most important is his radio. We can tell it's got some serious importance because if you put it up against the oracle in the vent, it freaks the hell out. Oh, and it also plays the radio music from Portal if you press E on it, so I guess the allusion to the Ratman and Aperture is at least somewhat intentional. Anyway, now that we've got the radio, there's a couple of weird scorch marks that have appeared around the map. As is shown in one of the oracle's hints, putting Ratman's radio up to these yields some interesting results. This one in the hallway plays yet another song from the Portal series, this time Potatoes Lament from the Portal 2 soundtrack. This second scorch mark right inside Ratman's lair is more interesting though, because it plays the infamous creepy radio song from Half-Life 2, interspersed with a weird string of numbers. If you've watched any of my other spooky Gmod videos, some of you guys might be getting deja vu right now. Because the Gmod ARG Classic GM videos, which I covered back in 2022, had an upload called Half-Life 2 Creepy Nova Prospect Easter Egg, where the protagonist of that series also puts a radio in a weird spot, and here's that same exact song and same exact number sequence. So what do we do with it? Well, in that series, the player plugs them into the console and gets plunged into the darkroom and construct. So why don't we try that? If we put these numbers in the console like so, we'll instantly get teleported to the darkroom alongside three three fast zombies, as well as an entity known only as Sad Grigori. Up until this point, there's actually been a small chance that the player might briefly spot Sad Grigori in the corner of the dark room anytime they enter, but if we help him kill these zombies, it'll make him stop appearing there for good, and hopefully stop being so sad. Also, this isn't required for progression, but there's another oracle hint that tells us to take the radio up to the top of this building by the pond. Once you do that, this will happen.
first time I did this on stream, I had no idea what the hell was going on, but apparently this was a visit from some kind of entity called the Minge God, which I guess is the smiley face guy in the sky in that oracle hint. I don't know why he's decided to strike us with some kind of fire tornado, but now that he has, our radio's now gained a big old new button on top of it, which gives us full control over when Minge bags appear in our game without having to do a weird, annoying, satanic ritual. Pressing the button on the radio if there's not any minges on the map will play the sound of a phone dialing, and once this orange meter fills up, it'll summon them at will. Pressing the button if there's minges already on the map turns them all into wooden crates. It's useful if you want to spend time exploring or trying to solve puzzles on this map without getting griefed into oblivion by chaotic hell monsters. Also, going forward it can get a bit annoying to haul both the curse detector and the radio around separately, so I'd recommend either putting them both in a bucket together or just connecting them with the rope tool to save yourself the hassle. Anyways, back to the puzzle. Do you remember that weird gas mask image from the ARC base? I told you it'd be important later. It turns out this image is telling us to closely investigate the mirror. So in true Mario 64 fashion, why don't we have a look? Welcome to the mirror world. At first, things don't seem so different, but once we make it to the surface, we're in for a bit of a mindfuck. This is a really trippy thing to explore. It's kind of crazy how simply flipping something horizontally made me feel completely disoriented and lost in an iconic level from a video game I've spent an ungodly amount of time in. Apparently, this is done by flipping the player's perspective and their controls, which is a technique that was also used in LiDAR, another really interesting Gmod horror project that, ah shit, I'm gonna have to do a video on that one as well at some point, aren't I? Anywho, we're not just in the mirror room to visit. We're here on a mission. In the in the mirror world, there are various spots on the floor marked by X's. They're all around the map in various locations, from the balconies to the secret room and the bunker, even down to Ratman's lair. Taking this knowledge, let's go have a look at some of those locations in the regular world. Heading back through the mirror, we can now see that in place of these X's are various different props and items that seem a little bit out of place. Notably, a trash can in the secret room, various globes around the map, and some of Ratman's furniture. When we get near them, the curse detector will beep really fast and flash green. And if we whack these items with the crowbar, they'll start shape-shifting. Most of them turn into baby dolls, but one of them turns into a skull and the doll from the secret room. This is where we'll again have to consult the oracle. This mural shows Ratman's table, with four babies, the skull, and the doll all suspended in the air above it. So we bring these items over and sure enough, they lock in place. Once the ritual is complete, it's time for a boss fight. This is not Grigori, and he's apparently a completely different entity than sad Grigori from earlier. You can tell because the other Grigori was just sad, while well, this guy is angry. The first time you face him, he's equipped with nothing but his shotgun, and as long as you don't let him catch you off guard, he's pretty easy to take care of. When he dies, he drops a citizen ration model that you can then put on your curse detector. This will upgrade it so that it automatically heals you when you're nearby. If you do the ritual a second time, this time he'll spawn waves and waves of man hacks to distract you and make things a little trickier. Take the package to the curse detector again, and it'll now heal you slightly faster. You can do this ritual one last time before the parts stop spawning. And on this final instance, Grigori will have both man hacks and a new bombing attack. The last upgrade to the curse detector makes you heal even faster, and also upgrades your suit energy. It's actually kind of useful for protecting yourself against minge bags. Now, this might seem like a pretty climactic place to end things, but there's actually a couple of other loose ends I gotta cover before we wrap this up. If we head back into the mirror dimension, we can find text in the bunker room reading, yes, prohibited materials ahead, do not open, and ancient evil inside do not enter. Heading back to this area in the real world, it turns out that we can break this wall open to reveal a giant dark cavernous space that's completely empty. It's like a second dark room, and I don't think it was ever actually in any of those real construct prototypes. Speaking of the dark room, let's have a look at this hint from the oracle. It shows the secret room doll in a chair with a grenade underneath it. The grenade is presumably a hint telling us to blow up the chair to summon Ratman, like we did earlier, but putting the doll from the secret room in the chair is something we have yet to try. So here goes. Welcome to the big dark room. In my opinion, this is the freakiest area in the entire map. You know how placing lights in the regular dark room wouldn't work because they'd just fizzle out? Well, in this place, pretty much nothing works. Once you're down here, you're trapped. Your first impulse might be to try and no-clip away, but you just flat out can't no-clip. The button doesn't work. My second impulse was to try lighting up the map using a console command called Matt Fulbright. That doesn't work either. If you have add-ons that add drones or night vision or campfires, even those will get destroyed down here, as shown in this oracle in. Hell, you can't even kill Bind to escape this place. On a first encounter, it's actually kind of terrifying. This deep, dark room cannot be contained or subverted by any human means. Thankfully, the game does eventually throw you a bone, as the chair and doll will both eventually reappear near you. Blowing up the chair again, you'll hear a female voice say, We thought you were here to help. Before getting teleported to various places around the map, as Semper from earlier stares you down. 
Then he'll disappear and you'll finally be let loose back into the regular map. This guy seems to be a really important part of the mystery given how much he appears and the way his reach extends to other maps. There's not too much left to talk about, but there's still a few other small things around the map I couldn't wrap my head around. Like this graffiti in the mirror world that cryptically tells us that the radio is receiving from the unknown. This little ass cubby near the oracle entrance that you can break open and seems like a perfect slot to put some kind of small item, but doesn't actually seem to do anything. And finally, this zombie with a weird block thing on his head. I got no idea what's going on with him, but he spawns randomly and can sometimes lag the hell out of your game. So, what's there to learn from all this? Well, if I had to take a guess as to what the root of all these anomalies are, and what the core mystery of Construct 13 Beta is, I'd say it seems that the insane, demonic darkroom dimension seems to hold some kind of dark essence that's spreading elsewhere throughout the map. What exactly this dark essence is, what it wants, how far it will go, and what we can do to stop it remains to be seen. One of the videos you can find linked on a panel in the ARC base shows a Combine Elite in what I think is the darkroom, and according to this page from the wiki, it's apparently got a message in Morse code insinuating that the dark room is an infection of some kind. Regardless, whatever it is that's down there, it's making changes to the map seemingly without the creator knowing. And maybe, just maybe, that's the reason why Gary doesn't remember certain versions of GM Construct. Now, this is the unfortunate part of the video where I have to break it to anyone who hasn't picked up on it yet, that this isn't actually a video about proving that GM Construct is haunted. It's a prank. It's a gag. I fooled you. Construct 13 Beta is actually just a really well-made alternate reality game project made by some Gmod veterans using a ton of complicated Lua programming. And you can see the full list of contributors if you shine your flashlight on the back of this board in the lakeside building, which has also got this little button that starts an NPC riot, which is cool. In the midst of me making this video, the creators actually pushed a small holiday update that added some pretty interesting seasonal content. Now, if you boot up the map during Christmas time, you'll get a snowy version of Construct with the pond frozen over, as well as dead Christmas trees with boxes you can bust malformed Half-Life 2 NPCs out of, snowmen that spawn around the map and say some really bizarre shit in chat when you blow them up, and even some new jolly music on the radio. It doesn't seem to add any new content related to the ARG itself, but it's still a cool show of life. And it's also genuinely pretty cool how much this texture swap completely changes the vibe of the map. The tunnels in Ratman's lair feel completely different, and now the minge bags feel less like distant, ominous disruptors, and more like little kids frolicking in the snow. Happy holidays, people. Now, there's absolutely no way I got everything in this map, and I can only imagine that this mystery is definitely going to unravel further in future updates. In fact, based on the map's Lua file, it seems like what's been implemented in the map so far only makes up one out of four tiers. Tiers presumably being phases of the ARG. So it seems like the devs are in it for the long haul here. This ARG isn't even limited to this one level either. There's apparently a couple of other maps in the workshop that have also been linked to Construct 13 Beta. The only one I could figure out was this one though. It's called GM Building Construct, and it's got a secret ARG ARC base hidden underneath it. The whole lore with this place kind of reminds me of those old construct and flat grass conspiracy maps from back in the day, if anyone remembers those. It's neat. Anyways, if you're interested in keeping up, I'd recommend checking out the official wiki and exploring the map yourself. Who knows, maybe I'll end up making another video about this thing later on down the line. The creator said in the comments under my stream that he's gotten busy with real life lately, which is why it's a bit buggy, but I'm still beyond impressed with this thing and I'm very excited to see where it goes. It's definitely a bit cheesy at times, but I still had a ton of fun and a couple pretty decent spooks looking into this project. So kudos to everyone who made this map possible, and here's to one day solving the creepy mystery of Construct 13 Beta. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more, give me all of your money before I blow your head off with a gun, and have a good day. There's a freak named Richter all the time, but to me he's Richter blow the time. Richter, hope you have an escape plan, cause Richter, you was a gay man. Today our guest is Richter all the time, but he's a freak named Richter blow the time. Richter, hope you have an escape plan, cause Richter, you was a gay man. Today our guest is Richter all the time, but he's a freak named Richter blow the time. And Richter, hope you have an escape plan, cause Richter, you was a gay man.